Hello and welcome back to a special episode of From the Workshop. I am your host, Brandon Hart, along with this guy. Hi, I'm Pat Sagsvian up here at DigiKey. Um, actually, if you notice, if you've been watching any of the DigiKey Electronics videos, we are in the same studio that they shoot another teaching moment. There we go. Yeah, not in the Nimbleink Nerd Lair this time. So every once in a while they do let me out. So it's a, it's a nice thing to be able to get on the road. They would let you out of there. I know. A lot of people don't think I ever get out. But yes, we are out um, here at DigiKey and um, wanted to talk a little bit for our IoT device developer audience out there um, about all the different LTE and cellular technologies that exist and what makes the most sense for which use cases. Uh, this seemed like the place to do it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a great place. Talk about some of the 3GPP stuff and uh, what, what a better guy to talk to than the spokesperson for Nimble. Wow, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna throw up a fancy graphic here and uh, this is basically the evolution of uh, cellular, pretty much. Um, so we got the 2G and 3G stuff that was pretty much your only option. It was used for everything. Um, and then we hit LTE, um, which was LTE category three. That's kind of where things diverged a little bit. LTE, long-term evolution, mm -hmm. um, is meant to evolve over time for different use cases. So we have the bigger, faster, stronger path. Yep. And then we've got the LTE MTC path meant for IoT devices. So with the bigger, faster, stronger path, I mean, now, that, that was an amazing thing that moving from 3G to 4G, the ability to really get like, I mean, you can get high, high quality video yeah. now and uh, looking at Cat3 on up, that's if you have a product that is going to be streaming high quality video, you're likely looking at Cat3 or above. Right. And uh, you've kind of got the same security across all spectrums of, you know, all categories of LTE. But at least with Cat3 on up, you, you, the latency goes way down. Yep. Um, ability to stream any any kind of video or control things, anything like that. So any media related thing is going to be an application for this. Yeah. Uh, 2G, 3G, pretty much non-existent here in North America. Uh, I mean, there are still some networks that are out there. Uh, but for the most part, it's all being sunset. It's all dying off. A lot of times you can't even certify these devices on AT&T, Verizon, etc. Um, but globally, there are still some applications for 2G, 3G networks. Those are still viable in a lot of places around the world. Um, maybe it's just as a fallback option for your LTE devices. Speaking of LTE devices, see how I did that? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it all starts with Cat3. And Cat3, again, was just known as 4G LTE initially. Um, but then they went higher and faster and bigger. Why? You can get more and more data. More data, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, so when you when you want to pass more data through it, when you want that lower latency, uh, streaming video, things like that, um, those higher categories of LTE make the most sense. But then, like all things, mm -hmm. they got smart and they said, well, we we've now got the more expensive because this is going to take more power and, and more horsepower to do this. So yeah. let's let's go a little bit cheaper, and they made Cat One, which really. For all intensive purposes, not different than Cat3. It's really not. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not a lot in the in the technical specification that uh, that makes it all that much different. Um, it is sort of artificially limited in its speed, but it's still 10 megabit per second down, mm -hmm. you know, theoretical maximum. Um, so it's still quite fast, and um, is essentially just cheaper. Yeah. It's just it just costs less than Cat3 and up uh, technology. So. It's uh, it's a a lot of the reason why people go that route. There is the antenna thing. Mm -hmm. one, oh yeah, because they can use just one antenna yeah. instead of two. Yeah, you really shouldn't do that though. Yeah, really, just <laughs> remove that other one because yeah. using a diversity antenna is it's really just you're picking up the best signal you can get. That's right. That's right. Um, so the the technology itself is really built for two antennas. Um, so the carriers have said we'll let you use a single antenna for Cat One. Um, but when you do that, you greatly reduce the performance. Uh, it's not meant to operate over a single antenna. So please don't use a single antenna, even with Cat1, if you can help it. Well, and, and I'll look into the future because uh, everybody knows, you know, we're getting more M to M communications, we're connected machines everywhere. Yep. Um, and we don't necessarily, you know, reading the sensor data of a thermometer, you don't need to be able to see video. You, That's you right. You don't need that big of a you pipe. Reduce the amount of, of bandwidth, reduce the power requirements, and, and you're going to be better off with, in a lot of those situations. Yeah. And, they, and so they offer us the, the CAT M1 and the NVIOT options. Yeah. 
And uh, a little different, uh, not the exact same thing for sure. They came um, out around the same time though, so there's a lot of confusion mm -hmm. about the, the differences between them. So so the biggest difference, or one of the biggest differentiators is the handoffs, being able to mm -hmm. move from spot to spot. That's so, right. So CAD M1, you're good to go. Pretty much, yeah. CAD M1 is inherently a mobile version of LTE. So it, it has the ability to reconnect to new cell sites, new ENOBs and, and stuff like that wherever you go. Good asset tracker. Absolutely, perfect yeah. for asset tracking. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still a big enough pipe where you can do, you can not only track the asset, but look at the conditions of the asset. Some you sensor can, data yep, go yep. along with that location data. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's also still very, very low power. Mm -hmm. So uh, PSM, EDRX, um, those are acronyms that you can find more information about in another From the Workshop video. Um, but uh, these are features that allow the power to be reduced quite a bit on those types of technologies. Um, yet, like you said, there's enough bandwidth there that you can still send a, a fairly decent amount of data through it. Um, NB-IoT, on the other hand. You're kind of stuck, right? Yeah, it's, it's really stationary. It's not meant to move. Um, yeah, so inherently, <laughs> uh, so there are ways to, to make it work in a mobile work uh, situation, but they're really workarounds for the technology and you're better off with an LTE CAT M1 deployment anyway. Yeah. There's so still some good go. applications though. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I heard of one, uh, the, the DOT was looking at putting devices on stop signs, Yeah. which uh, you can't track the stop. If somebody were to steal the stop sign, you can't track it once it leaves. Right, because it's not D mobile. Yeah, the DOT could say, well, it's not there anymore. So yeah. at least we it's can- It's not go. reporting in, it's not saying I'm still present, so it must not be there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or uh, applications for agriculture, like say like plants, right? Yeah. They don't move. These pine cones have been sitting right. there the whole time. Right, the whole right. Video. Stationary plants, uh, monitoring soil conditions, things like that. Um, you know, absolutely. NBIOT, send that data up. And, th and that's once a day. even between the two of those, NBIOT mm -hmm. should theoretically use less power than, that's uh, right. than CAD M1. That's right. It is lower power because it doesn't do a lot of the things like be able to gracefully handle handoffs and, and that kind of thing. Um, so it's inherently a lower power technology. However, if you send a large packet of data through an NB-IoT connection, you're going to use more power than an M1. Okay. Because it takes longer. So, so therefore that radio has to be on longer. So if there was an application that could kind of fit both, but you were going to be using more data, now you still want to actually go CAT M1 because, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. That you makes can sense. send the data faster, turn the radio back off again faster, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so if we were tracking a shipment of pine cones, we wanted to make sure that the temperature, the humidity, all the other conditions, as you mentioned, that sensor data, um, it, that everything was right so that those pine cones end up pristine when they arrive at their location. Um, for whoever's going to use those, <laughs> we can make sure that we are using LTE category M1. When those pine cones are being grown, when they, you know, we're, we're monitoring the conditions of that stationary, you know, deployment, um, that could be a great N uh, NBIOT yeah. deployment. Well, this is all, this is great. And it, and it sounds like, you know, so now we've talked about 3G yep. and, and like this 4G LTE, and it seems yep. like it's a lead up to something else. So 3G, 4G, you're saying there's more? It might be a 5G. <laughs> 5G. But when would it come? Yeah, so 5G technically has been deployed by, uh, I think Verizon has it in about four different cities across the United States. But it's really a replacement for residential broadband connectivity, you know, home internet. Um, so it's a totally different type of thing. You know, we talked about 4G having the faster, bigger, you know, stronger version and then the slower, lower power version. Yep. We're very much on the bigger, faster, stronger, more power hungry yeah, edition of 5G. Yeah, probably be a little while before we start getting into these these types of products on, yeah. on, uh, on the uh, 5G network. Right, there are different categories of, of, of 5G. Um, and so massive machine type communication or MMTC is what we as IoT device developers are really excited about. Um, super dense networks where you can have all of the things, everything communicating over those 5G networks. Um, that's really the way to go, but we're not going to see that for quite a few years. Yeah. 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 So anyway, that's the rundown. Uh, those are the different wireless technologies, the different cellular technologies and the different use cases for each. Um, this has been from the workshop slash another teaching moment. Yep, and make sure to subscribe to the DigiKey videos on the DigiKey channel. Please do. And you can subscribe to From the Workshop on the NimbleLink channel as well. Uh, so subscribe, like, comment below if you would. Click the bell, do all the things. And we will see you on the next From the Workshop slash another teaching moment. And until then, have fun building.